let's see. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Maureen Toomey, University of Idaho Area Extension Educator, uh, sharing with you, you and I together, week three, creating with oil pastels. So who is the University of Idaho Extension? UI Extension brings the knowledge and the research of the University of Idaho, of Idaho to you, where you live and, and when it's convenient for you. We are the leaders in building thriving, prosperous, and healthy Idaho. UI Extension provides reliable research-based education and information to help people, businesses, and communities solve problems, develop skills, and build a better future. Through our statewide network of faculty and staff in 42 counties on three federally recognized tribal uh, um, communities and nine College of Agricultural and Life Sciences Research and Extension Centers, we work to transform knowledge into solutions that work. To find your location near you, check out our chat. Joey's going to put the link in for you. We focus on contemporary topics small and large scale sustainable agriculture, horticulture, natural resources, health and nutrition, food safety, personal finance, financial management, youth development and community development. So today we're going to highlight our nutrition health and wellness group. University of Idaho Extension is keeping Idaho's citizens and communities healthy by helping people of all ages improve their health and build important life skills. From nutrition education, diabetes management, and food safety to family finance education, UI Extension is helping build healthy and thriving Idahoans. So uh, as the um, working with uh, 4-H youth development, my focus is on health and wellness. And I have a few highlights here for you today. Uh, first, I wanna really promote this great new curriculum, Five for Five, Five Minutes to Better Health, available um, across the state to incorporate into any program, any meeting, any gathering of peoples. Take, take five minutes and do some stretching and movement for better health. Uh, our Choose Health Food Fun and Fitness curriculum is uh, a great way to learn about nutrition education. And that program is really led by our Eat Smart Idaho team across the state, delivering nutrition ed to any group that gathers in classroom and out of classrooms. Another great highlight is our Farm to Early Care and Education and after school programs. And this brings fresh fruits and produce to early child care centers or after school programs so kids can learn about eating healthy and incorporating it into gardening, growing their own produce. As part of that, we use the Learn, Grow, Eat, and Go Junior Master Garden Curriculum. As an area educator for health and wellness, I also focus on supporting the delivery of <laughs> uh, I also focus on the, the delivery of uh, supporting social and emotional well-being in kids. And the way we do, are doing that right now is we've just launched our new 4-H create, create Art Now curriculum book. We also have supplemental lessons to the book. Uh, and we also have our outside the box visual arts learning lab. If you're interested in any of these resources, I'm your contact on that. So let's get started today. We're going to do creating with oil pastels, which is a supplemental lesson for the Create Art Now. What you will need is oil pastels, some mixed media black paper, wet wipes or tissues, a ruler, straight edge, and pencil. Uh, 
Okay. So what we have is I'm going to give you a demonstration and I hope that you can follow along. You will need a nine by 12 inch sheet of mixed media paper. We don't recommend construction paper uh, for this particular activity. You'll need a ruler or a straight edge. You will need some oil pastels, a pencil, and at least one wet wipe or tissue, that's fine. So the first thing we're going to do is take our nine by 12 sheet of paper and split it in half. And you can cut that in half if you'd like. Let me show you how to do an easy marking. And it's a great little math activity also. The paper's 12 inches across, half of 12 is six. So I have six inches and six inches. So I'll make a little nick on my paper. I'm going to come down here because I like straight lines. I'm going to add another little mark. And just for you today, I'm going to make my line in a white oil pastel. So you, you can see it. I pull that along the edge of my ruler. So there I have a divided sheet. You could use a pair of scissors to cut that. I like doing this though with my paper. Let's fold it in half. I line up my edges. I double check my corners. I pull my fingers down along the fold line and score the paper. I'll open it up. You can see I hit it just right on that white line. I'll score it again. And I'm coming back and I'm folding it in half again. This is just to get the paper cut in half. Then you can start to rip it carefully by holding your index finger along that fold line. Another strategy you could use is to set your ruler or straight edge in there, pick up your paper and pull it along the edge of the ruler. It gives it a little bit of a rough edge, which really works with when you go to use the oil pastels. Set one sheet aside. We're only going to work with one today as this is the practice, and then you'll have a second sheet to work with later. Okay. On this sheet, we're going to divide this into six squares. The way to do that, it's nine inches across. Well, let's start, it's six inches this direction. So remember, half of six is three. So I'll make a little nick right there. So we've got three inches and another three inches. That's equals six. I'm going to do the same thing down here, three inches. Another three, three plus three is six. Again, I'll set my ruler on those marks. Use a white oil pastel simply so you can see it. You can use your pencil at your site and just pull it down. So there's part of our markings for the day. Okay, and then we're going back in here. It's nine inches across. So let's divide it into one thirds. That's three sets. So a three, six, three plus three more is six, plus your last three is nine. Again, we make those marks on the other side. So this is a great way to learn some fractions. Three plus three plus three equals nine. Again, let's just get in our white line so that you can see. And that creates a grid of six, three by three inch squares. It does not have to be perfect, perfect measurements. Don't worry about that. We're creating, this process is, is kind of very much flows. Now, I want you to think about one geometric shape. It could be a square, a triangle, maybe a diamond, a rectangle, which is different than a square, or a circle. I selected circles today. So I'm going to draw a circle in each of my boxes. I am going to try and keep the circles about the same size. Okay, so here I go, I'll move. Oh, my that one's a little wobbly, that's okay. All right, 
Today we're working with color, shapes, and using our space to create variety in our artwork. So to create, to help that variety, I'm going to put a circle inside a circle on each of these. I have selected five colors. You're welcome to select three to five colors. You can select more, but five seems to work well. And so the first color I've selected is a nice yellow. And I'm going to color in the center of my circles in yellow. I really did not worry about going over that white line. I can come back and keep the white line uh, by adding more or just cover it over. I think I'm going to cover it all over. So if you want to lay down some oil pastels, one color in each of your circles. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Let me give you some information on oil pastels. They are um, a blend of pigments, oil, and wax. I prefer this particular brand. There's a junior artist set that's very affordable, or the Expressionist line. And I prefer the Expressionist line. It has a little bit more oil, and the pastels tend to blend better for me. But any pastel will work. It's great to experiment. All right, you've got some some color on your black mixed media paper. Now you can come in with your finger and smooth that. And what is so wonderful about pastels is they blend and it, the, it, they have a rich creamy texture. Working on the black mixed media paper gives your artwork rich texture. I like to use about a 120 pound or um, Another way to measure is grams per square meter, and this happens to be 180 grams per square meter. You're, you'll see that on paper packaging um, more and more now. I'm going to come in with a nice pink, and I'm going to do a pink line around my center yellow. I'm not worrying about that white line. I simply put that in as a guide. You'll also notice I'm not just um, doing crazy lines in any direction, but I'm using a circular line as that was the sh my original shape. So let's, for using our color and our shapes working together and using up this space, we're, we're really working towards variety in our artwork. And keep in mind, this is a practice today. When you do art, I encourage you to do it the same activity many times. Build up your art skills and all those techniques. Okay, so I've laid down some pink. Now I'm going to smooth that out. You've got your wet wipe so that you can clean up your fingertip if you like. So smooth that in. All right. And then the next color I think I will select is, um, I've got this really interesting kind of brown gold. It's actually called ochre. And again, I'm going to set that in. If I go over my white line, I am fine with that, but I am doing it in a circular motion. If you are using a square as your shape, you might wanna do lines that go up and down or side to side or maybe up and down and then go over side to side. Okay, so I've set that in. Now I'm going to smooth it out because I, I want some of the black showing, not too much of the black paper. And I'm really liking this effect. So we'll do that. Oops, let's see. I think I'll move down here to this other quadrant because I'm using my color to help with that sense of variety in the artwork. So, um, I want to set this in. Okay. So how are your colors working out? Are you happy with the ones you've selected so far? Give that some thought. Are they really working together? 
if you answered no, that they don't quite work together, that's okay. Remember, this is a practice. And so we'll set in, and then this one down here. How you set your color in, your use of color is up to you. Sometimes we might think that colors don't go together, but it's amazing when you look in nature how much, how interesting colors can be side by side. So I'm going to smooth this down. Now, my white line showing, I'm going to just not worry too much about that. I'll come back. If I think I need to cover it up, I can add another layer of oil pastel. Now, just for curiosity, because I was experimenting with this, I'm going to take a purple pastel and color in these three. So this really is using color and shape to create some variety. So I'll color these in. I am going over that white line. I think I think that's just going to work better in the end when I'm all done. And then this one over here. And again, circular lines, layers of pastel, and you can really feel that that waxy, oily texture of the pastels being laid down on the black mixed media paper. And then I'm going to smooth this out. I'm getting really curious as to what's going to happen here. But I'm patient. And then I've got one last circle. You know, this pink is not very uh, big around my yellow. I'm coming in. A little correction, that's okay to do too. And I'm going to lay down some more pink before I put down the purple. Okay. Again, I'm using a circular motion that just happens to be the shape I selected, my geometric shape in my three by three inch square here. Okay, all right, that's a nice layer. With oil pastels, you can layer them. So if you uh, find that you don't care for that much black space showing from the paper, you can come back in and add another layer, work it with your fingertip, smooth it down. Any, any fingertip works. All right, now that's some interesting design going on, but it's really not finished. I think to finish this off, what I need to do is make the background help these little circles pop. So I'm going to add green. I'm going to work one square at a time. I'm not just going everywhere. So I will carefully work in this first square. Now you'll see I'm doing up and down strokes. Around that circle, I'll lay in a circular line, however, create some definition between my two colors. And then I'll come back in and do top to bottom, all around, nice strokes. Okay. All right. All right, so there's some green, but I'm gonna smooth it out. Um, I do really like how the pastels blend into the paper. That's just my personal preference. You don't need to blend if you don't want to. Okay. I'm, I'm liking how the green helps this pop. So I will go and do this in each square, one square at a time, take my time, give it some thought, clean my fingers as I need to. So that's the basic concept of creating oil with oil pastels on black mixed media paper. Let me show you. I did actually a test. Let me show you how it came out. So with all artwork, even practice artwork, it is fun to give your artwork a name, a title. So I'm calling this March 
into spring because it looks to me like it's that March green grass coming up and growing with nice little spring flowers popping up. So this is my March into spring. I did purple, 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 and then gold, gold, and gold. So I have used shape and color. I've used all my space to create variety. Let me show you this one. This is a little bit different. And I have to be honest, I didn't give this one a name. What name would you give this one? I've got a purple background, pinkish purple. I did blue, blue, and then a lighter blue. And on the other side, I did a lighter blue and then two darker blues in a row. Again, it's shape and space and color to create variety in my artwork. Let me show you some other examples <clears throat> of oil pastels on black. This one is cones. They use more than five colors. It really works. It's pretty simple, but I like it. This one is cones again, but they added a lot of detail, dots, swirlies, swirly lines, thick lines, thin lines, diagonal lines. And again, more than five colors on this one. This is an interesting one. It doesn't look like there's six squares, but there are. Let me show you with my black paper. I'll block them out. There's the first column, the top and the bottom. Here's the second column. And there's the last column. So there really are six boxes here. The artist started out with small squares placed in the corners and rectangle and a rectangle. And then they built from there and they added the detail of black lines to create a sense of either going in or coming out of the artwork. Now, we started with a nine by 12 sheet of mixed media paper. You can work on a full size mixed media paper also. This one, we divided into eight rectangles. So again, the way to do that is divide your paper in half with two columns and then divide that into one, two, three, four across. Because this is 12 inches, can you think how you would measure that? It'd be three inches, three inches, that's six, three more, that's nine, and the last three comes to 12. It's a great math exercise. Here's a mixed media one uh, on mixed media paper, but they did not smooth down the pastels around their design. So it's a totally different texture and very engaging and interesting. And our last one that I'll quickly show you is pretty advanced. They created flowers in each of their quadrants. It has a white circle in each flower. They slightly blended a little on the black mixed media in the open area. And then to add emphasis, they added white circles between each of the quadrants and a white line. So let me share our next step. And I hope you are having um, hope you are having fun with your activities there at your site. Okay. So there's my artwork. So I want to know if you were able to use color and your shape and um, the space to create variety in your artwork. And if your site could answer the poll questions that Joey has just pulled up, that'd be great. That just provides us more information. So was the activity enjoyable? The next question is, did you learn one new art technique? Do you want to slide that down, Joey? We can go to the third question. 
Can you see that? I see the, oh, you, you know what? You're probably right, Joey. Yes. It's just the way it's showing on my screen. So will you practice this art technique again? Did you give your artwork a title? And if you haven't yet, you still can. And lastly, will you share your artwork with another person? That could be your family, your friend, or a teacher. Okay. We do have uh, additional you and I together. Next week, we'll be fe featuring carrot cake oatmeal bake uh, on March 14th. I see I have 15th on the screen. It's really March 14th. We are going to be uh, featuring salad bowl gardening, and that is how to grow a garden uh, that's perfect for your salad bowl. On March 21, it's my plate mini pizzas. On March 28th, it's preserve the abundance, how to do dehydration of food. And on April 4th, it's cooking with cooking beef with kids.